Welcome to Industrial Problem Solving. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue this new mini-series on troubleshooting using a form of pattern recognition. In this clip, we will discuss one of the most common of all patterns, that is, where the defect is narrow. This would include defects that are found in ridges, valleys, corrugations, lanes, and in streaks and stripes. Please see the previous clips in this series if you haven't already done so, because we will be building on the concepts covered earlier. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. A lane here is defined as where the waste, delay, or customer complaint histogram is narrow compared to the width of the web. There may be more than one troubled lane in the web. The lane of trouble may come and go, though when it comes, it prefers a certain location for reasons you need to figure out. There are many aliases for this narrow troubled region, including ridges, valleys, lanes, stripes, streaks, corrugations, and others. Notice that the root cause may be intentional, such as in the case of printing patterns, or unintentional, such as the case of poor thickness profile control. The shape tool says that the shape of a problem must resemble the shape of the cause. This tool is one of the most flexible and adaptable and powerful in our troubleshooting toolbox. It is almost always central to difficult problems such as baggy webs, as you can see in my series Web 201.45 A through R. So, let's apply the shape tool to troubleshooting lanes. Here we have a defect coming out of a process, such as a coder or printer or whatever. Earlier, we showed that the flip tool can sometimes be used to definitively determine whether the lane is owned by the raw material or is owned by the process. We can use the shape tool in either case. For troubleshooting lanes, the most important attribute by far is location. The next most important is location, and then location, as the real estate joke goes. In troubleshooting web processes, the most important attribute truly is CD location, because a defect on the back quarter point cannot be created by profile variability on the front quarter point, and vice versa. The next most important is width. A narrow defect cannot be created by a wide flaw and vice versa. The reason why this is not as important as location is because the width of the defect as you see it and the width of the cause may be somewhat different. Usually the defect as you see it is narrower than its cause due to thresholding, as we saw in the previous two clips. Absolutely, the least important attribute is frequency, and severity, and timing of the coming and going. I could and have written chapters on this subject, but timing still persists as one of the more popular troubleshooting tools. I teach that a hyper-focus on timing is more often a problem-solving pitfall. I have often figured out root cause mechanics and solved problems without ever finding what the trigger was. Let's use our new shape screening tool to a familiar problem that we've used in our troubleshooting series baggy edges. Clearly, the shape is either a smile or a frown. 
A streaky coder add-on would not be a good candidate for root cause because it is streaky, not smile or prone shape. Roller misalignment would not be a good candidate for root cause because it is tapered, not smile or frown shaped. Web tension would not be a good candidate for root cause because it is linear, not smile or frown shaped. Is it possible that streakiness or misalignment or tension could make things worse? Is it possible that they could be triggers for a rash of complaints? Absolutely. Would these things be useful things to know? Absolutely. But they are not central to the root cause. We have not found it yet, even if there is statistical correlation. Could deflection of a coding nip be responsible? Absolutely. And it has the right shape. Is it responsible? We don't know yet. All we know, that it is a good candidate for baggy edges because it has the correct shape. So, in this simplified example, we have eliminated three of four ideas for root causes using a simple observation that the problem favored the edges. In hindsight, these things may appear obvious, but boy have people missed the obvious in their troubleshooting efforts. We have all been around people who can easily make lists of possibilities. Usually it is a major parts list and control settings for a machine. But those same people have no ideas on how to test or screen those ideas that they've just offered. To make matters worse, management sometimes encourages this kind of sloppy thinking with popular problem-solving programs such as Kepner-Trago, fishbone diagrams, and Six Sigma statistical fishing expeditions. Yes, these programs are sometimes helpful and sometimes even the best choice, but they are seldom a good substitute for cleverness creativity, and logical thinking. Let us return to our streaky coder as an example of lane troubleshooting using the shape tool. Here we can eliminate misalignment, web tension, and finally uniform temperature and quality crowning as root cause mechanics. We do this by shape alone. Physics alone is all that is needed to know the shape of roller misalignment. Measurement is merely confirming of magnitude, not shape. Temperature and crowning are more complicated. The operative word for temperature is uniform. If the temperature is streaky in the right locations, it would be a good candidate and perhaps even a great candidate. The true uniformity of temperature profile is so important to get right that we must know it by several different and independent lines of reasoning and measurement. One measurement type alone may not be good enough for screening purposes. For example, your measurement may be good to five degrees yet the process may be sensitive to 0.5 degrees. We must take similar care with crown quality. It could have the right target magnitude, but if the quality of the grind is poor, or if the maintenance is poor, you could have local lanes of high or low nip pressure and thus streaky response. Notice that we do not have the same concern with deflection from the previous slide. Deflection due to gravity or nips is always smile shaped and deflection is always uniform.
Let us finish with a common pattern that you may have seen many times before, even spacing. As we covered in our Web 101 course, MD wrinkles may be evenly spaced. Some of the subtype examples include those caused by hydrothermal expansion, tension addition, and more. As we covered in our Web 101 course, some wound roll defects may be evenly spaced. A great example here is the tin can that is common on some film grades. What is important here is not so much the spacing per se, but rather that the spacing between defects when they occur are roughly uniform. Something like the tendency for snowflakes to have six points. Some web and roll defects strongly prefer patterns because they are lower energy states. Knowing these physics, for example, allows us to differentiate between simple gauge bands and tin cans that may actually favor high gauge areas. If you are not familiar with the details on how to tell a gauge band from a corrugation and from a tin can, or how profile affects winding defects, then might I suggest taking my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 class that has been taken by 5,000 students just like you. Thank you so very much for joining me in this problem solving and problem preventing series that is based on web profile. Let me know if there's anything you would like to hear about in the comment section below or just email me at drroysom.aol.com. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. Patreons are given special thank you gifts ranging from email help to a signed copy of my latest book, the must-have 500-page web handling handbook. See you next time!